Okay, for my competitive Andes, this is the video for you. We're talking loadouts, we're talking talents, we're talking optimization, and just a bunch of nerdy stuff, right, about the game. One disclaimer, I am not a control player, so if there are control variants for some characters, I am not going to mention them. If a character has an item that he buys 99% of the time that affects the loadout in some way, I'm going to talk about it. Otherwise, items are out of the window. Please, if you have questions, ask them in the comments. I cannot go over every single little detail in this video. It's going to be too damn long. I'll try to be nice, I swear. And please just don't be dumb. Watch the whole fucking video. There is a core mechanic. Well, yes, you could call it a mechanic. There's a core concept in Paladins. Breakpoints or thresholds, whatever you want to call them. Characters have raw HP. That's their HP pool. If it goes to zero, you die. There's something called effective HP. What goes into your effective HP? Your raw HP pool, self-sustained cards, as in healing, your damage reduction cards, because it's effectively adding more HP. If you have 1000 HP and you add 20% damage reduction on top of that, it's just like if you had 1200 HP. Now, DPS, because we're going over DPS on this video. You clicked on it, you saw the thumbnail. If you are Below 2000 HP, you are extremely squishy. If you are between 2000 HP and 2200 HP, you are a normal squishy target. If you have 2200 HP to 2400 HP, you are in a good HP pool, pretty decent one. If you are on 2400 HP plus, you are tanky for a DPS character. This is effective HP. This is not raw HP. If you understood that, great. If you didn't, go back. Listen again. Pay attention. Stop looking at your phone at the same time as this video. I know what you're doing. Now that this is out of the way, unless it's like very, very important that I talk about it, very specific, I'm not going to mention HP cards. Omen. Umbra Lens. No variation there. Omen has several loadouts. You have your default basic bitch loadouts. More, more, more. Coming end, shaded speed are your core cards, which means these cards need to be in your loadout and more and more, more needs to be on level 4, shaded speed on level 3, coming end, level 1 or 2. In that case, it's level 2 because we have nothing else to level up, like everlasting vision. What the fuck? What the fuck are you gonna put here as a filler card? There's literally nothing. Also, this character doesn't have good self sustained cards, so that's out of the window. This is a similar loadout. If you haven't noticed, this character gets his ultimate pretty fast already, alright? So, imagine, 30% increased ultimate charge rate with morale boost. Your ultimate is basically a cooldown now. If you don't mind using his ultimate, knowing that most of the time it's still not gonna hit anyone, but it's a really good zoning tool, enjoy this loadout. It's really great. It's I would argue it's even a little bit better than the other one because this character doesn't need as much HP as this. Now, the reason we have 100 HP here which doesn't break any threshold and we don't have any self-sustain cards is because Omen inherently is a character that plays like a pip but because he doesn't have a potion to heal himself he needs more resources from his support also deft hands please now this is if you're gonna play against a 7 Maeve, Eevee, maybe Androxus these characters really hate when you general script them and just throw them on the other side of the map that's why we have everlasting vision on a higher level you can not have this loadout. It's not mandatory, but it's good to have in certain situations. Knessa, reposition. Sometimes steady aid. When you are uncontested by any mobile characters, that means they have a slow comp with no mobility, and the only things that can really shoot you are things that shoot from far away, which is rare. So please play reposition most of the time. Classic reposition loadouts. Power supply, mandatory level 4 minimum. Prodigy, I would say level 4 minimum. Uh, level 3 sometimes in certain situations which, which I'm going to show you. Prodigy is good because while you're jumping and scoping, you can travel faster, you can change angles faster, you can peek in a certain way to throw off uh, other people's aim. She's really good at doing this. Also, you can just peek normally with a little bit more movement speed, which makes you able to shoot people without taking damage back because you can hide behind the corner faster. Headstrong, I would say this is mandatory. Some people prefer playing True Grit. You do you. I'd rather have more HP because the self-heal is not enough nowadays. They nerfed it too much. This is a variant if you're gonna play against Strix. Knessa has in the base kit a reveal ability. So when you shoot people while you're scoped in, you're gonna reveal them through walls for yourself for a brief moment. And if you add Eagle Eye on top of it, it's even better, especially into Strix because I will show you a few clips on screen right now. I have gotten a few kills just because of this card. Now, like I said, Prodigy on level 3, 
Why do we have Prodigy on level 3? Well, we don't have the space. We need Power Supply on level 4. Open Season is one of the best fillers in the game. Eagle Eye below level 3 is worthless, and above is like completely overkill. Headstrong, if it's not on level 4, it's pretty useless because the sole reason we run Headstrong is that most of the games when you play Kinesa are going to be targeted by everyone. Enemy Snipers, Enemy Flankers, even Tanks sometimes. So you need to have a good enough HP pool. It also makes your Teleporter trigger a bit earlier, so you're a bit safer. Now this is one of the variants where you're going to play into triple tanks and you're in those situations where ah, it's three aggressive tanks, they don't have a lot of shields. I can afford to play Calibrate, so I can pew 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 and TP away and be fine and hope my support heals me. This is your basic steady aim loadout, nothing new here. If you are in a situation where you can play steady aim but there is a sniper, just play this. If you want to, you can go and run Eagle Eye there and decrease Headstrong on level 4, decrease Beam Me Up if you want to, decrease Prodigy, have Eagle Eye on level 3 and you're good. You could also replace Bob and Weave for something else. Drogos? Well, Drogos is a really handsome boy, but aside from that, people get it wrong. Drogos is 50-50 between combustible and fusillade. Worm Jets is not good anymore. Some people still think it's a, oh, 33%, it's like uh, you can play the one you want, it's just preference. No, the flying Drogos loadout is still a thing that you probably need, but Worm Jets doesn't, it doesn't give you enough value. So you choose between combustible or fusillade. Which one? The one you prefer. The one you're better at, the one you are the most comfortable with. If you're good on both, you, it just depends, man. Some games I prefer fusillade and some games I prefer combustible, but most of the time I personally play combustible. I feel like combustible is the slightly, ever so slightly better card because of the knockback and the outplays that you can do because of it. But fusillade is just raw fucking damage and it's really high damage and it's really good. Here are all of the loadouts that you probably would need except this one, which I'm gonna go over later. Drogos is interesting. You need Masterful, Condescension, Apex Predator. Because of things that we explained before, Apex Predator needs to be on level 3 minimum. This character buys Haven and Veteran all the time, so you don't need to run it on level 4 instantly. Because Drogos gets cucked by hit scans most of the time, the only way you get around that is being just more tanky in general, so that's why this is one of his core cards. Condescension, level 3 minimum. Masterful, if it's not on level 4, you're trolling. If it's on level 5, it's overkill. If it's below that, it's just why? you could make it so much better. Now, do you want a fusillade loadout or do you want a combustible loadout? If you want a fusillade loadout, you shove in hot swap on level three. Why on level three? Because you're gonna shoot two direct hits, it's gonna stack and you're gonna have 60% bonus reload speed, which is the cap. There is a cap in this game to 60%. So no deft hands and no hot swap level four, five. Level two or one is just inefficient. So it's level 3. Then you can choose one filler card. It could be a filler card that you run on level 2, like Decimate. It could be a filler card that you run on level 1, like Fuel Tank. From here, you're missing one point. Well, what do you do? You could run more HP. It's a completely valid way of doing it. You could run Condescension. That's also completely valid. You hit two people with a Fire Spit, you basically have your thrust back. I would say this comes down to personal preference. In my case, if I'm playing Fusillade, I'd rather have a little bit more HP because I'm more up in people's faces. Now, my Fusillade loadout looks like this. It's exactly the same that I show you. Like we said though, how do you make this a combustible loadout? Well, it's pretty simple. All the same cards. Combustible really only needs these three cards and then it's like filler. If you want to, you could run Hot Swap as a filler on level one or two. You could run Lung Capacity and then lower one point somewhere else, which I will show you a loadout like this. Or you could do it like me if you want to be a little bit more mobile with combustible, especially on games where you need to outplay a little bit more when you're taking duels and you can just you know, use your thrust over and over again so that you can throw off hit scan players aim and be just generally more annoying. Now listen, if you don't trust your support player, like I said, you can run lung capacity right there. Level 3, level 4, depends. Because I'm running this on a higher level, I will drop one point in Apex Predator. Since lung capacity counts into my effective HP pool. Now Drogos needs also a flyer loadout, like we said. We're gonna make one. It's right there. Basically the same cards. Now the only difference is if you want to play Fusillade or Combustible while being a flyer. When do you pick a flyer loadout first of all? It's when you are playing against characters that can hardly hit you when you are flying. Especially if you're using cover correctly. For that you need Rain of Fire on level 4 minimum. If you feel like you need it on level 5, you want to drop a point on Apex, you could argue that. I run it on level 4 because I think it's enough. Apex Predator on 3. Fuel Tank on 1 because it synergizes with the flying mechanics. Condescension on level 4 because we don't have Masterful. We replace it with Hot Swap. We don't have space to slot in Masterful and Hot Swap at the same time. Hot Swap is mandatory if you're playing Fusillade, so 
we're going with that. Now look, it's the same loadout with Masterful instead of Hotswap. We said we need Masterful on level 4, so we drop one point in Condescension, which makes the most sense. Why? Because you have Masterful now, which means you have almost twice the amount of Fire Spits than if you were playing Fusillade. So because you have more Fire Spits, you have more Condescension procs, so you can afford to run it on level 3. This... this is whatever. I highly advise you don't play it. Survival is a bad card. It used to be a good card. Times were different and the character played a little bit differently. Now, why do I have this loadout? I had one tournament a while ago where I had to specifically make this loadout before the game started. What happened is I was playing on Bright Marsh. I was going to get dove by a Ruckus, a controller Ruckus by himself. I needed survival to make, to throw off his aim plus the condescension procs. And because the Ruckus had almost no follow-up, it was only Moji as a follow-up. If I'm out of Moji's reach, I should be fine against the Ruckus. This is such a niche situation, I would say don't even bother with that loadout, but if you really want it, there it is. Leon can play Eminence or she can play Precision. How do you know which one do you want to choose? Leon is a character that is meant to delete other DPS characters like Androxus, Fatu, Maeve, Tyra, Victor, etc. If you're in a game where you're not allowed to do that, then you pick Precision. In most situations though, you're gonna pick Eminence. If you are unsure, I advise you to pick Eminence until you get a grasp of when to pick Precision. It should be 85% of your games on Eminence and 15% on Precision. Though if you are forced into Precision, it means that you pick Leon too early and you go counterpick and that's, that's just on you. That's a, an entirely different problem. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, Eminence allows you to have burst damage in a quick succession. If you know the combos that Leon can do, you can just chain abilities in between auto attacks. This is great if you wanna, like we said, delete squishy characters. Now, if you want to delete tanks because you're forced to, precision would be the way because it's a damage ramp up over time and it gives you consistent damage. Leon has three loadouts. The first one, basic eminence loadout. Four cards are heraldry, manifest destiny, and inheritance on every loadout. Eagle's Emerald is a nice filler. If you don't like this one, go Superiority. Present Arms, it's specific to this loadout. If you like the self-sustain, or if you don't like your supports, this is basically what you're gonna play. Now, all of these loadouts are preference-based, but ideally this one is slightly better than the others because it has inheritance on max level, which allows you to snowball a lot, which is the sole reason you pick Leon in competitive. So again, Inheritance, Heraldry, Manifest Destiny, Eagle's Emerald, now the new card there is Swift Jade. It opens up more possibilities for you because you are more elusive, you have more dashes, so you are less squishy in a way. You are harder to kill because you can escape very easily. It allows you to combo a little bit more. You have one additional shot technically because you have one additional dash. You can get out of really, really shitty situations if you fucked up. We have Heraldry on level 3 because we are relying on Inheritance to get our cooldowns back. Now if you think about it, Leon buys Kronos in general, so it's not that big of a deal. Heraldry on 3 is not too low so that it's useless, but not too high so that it takes so many points that we don't have enough space for the other cards. This is a variant of the same loadout. The only difference is Inheritance and Heraldry. We swap the points. This is if you're less confident in your ability to get Elans. Like the name suggests, this is a good loadout. This is if you like heals. And this would be the ideal loadout to run. Now, you have noticed that we don't have any HP card in these loadouts. Why? Well, Leon has so many good cards that require a certain level. It means you can only run HP on level 1 or 2, which is not enough to break any threshold. Plus, if you really want the self-sustain on an Eminence loadout, like I said, you can play the heal one. You're gonna have 300 healing every time you use Q, which is gonna be pretty fucking often. So that's better than running an HP card. Precision doesn't rely on elims. Why? Because we don't rely on cooldowns as much. We rely on our left clicks. The damage ramp up. Consistent damage that we can provide. That's why we run Swift Jade again, so that we can be a little bit more elusive, because Leon is a floaty character. Eagle's Emerald for some ammo. Very important. Manifest Destiny. Very important. Superiority. Extremely important on Precision and Noble Crest, because if we're going for more consistent damage, the fights are gonna be a little bit longer. And it's not like your duel is gonna last one second and you're gonna just burst someone and kill them, right? It's gonna be, like I said, fights are gonna be longer, so you need more HP, more, you need to be more sustainable. Hassi, most of the time, I would advise people to play Impulse. Second best would be Exaction, third best would be Big Game. Impulse is like the one you can play pretty much all the time. Exaction is the one you play if you really want to carry in ranked especially. If you're playing into comps that are not super mobile, uh, that don't have shields or don't have a lot of shields, and you're just allowed to be free, move around the map, do your thing. If the enemy comp doesn't allow you to play Exaction, you would certainly play Impulse. 
You could also make an argument that big game is playable sometimes, because let's say you're playing into Yagarath and Rom, while Impulse is not gonna help you kill them. Exaction is nice into them, because they don't have shields, so that's an option. But big game just allows you to delete them instantly, and it's such a threat because of the loadouts that you run with that. Every 5 seconds you have the potential to just destroy a tank, even squishies. It's also a good one to run against Ruckus, for example. Now Exaction. Cassie has one card that is in every loadout, it's Somersault. Level 2 or 3, depends on how ballsy you are, how comfortable you are. For Exaction, you need Incitement on level 5, and you need Onslaught on a high enough level for it to matter, so level 4 or 5. Quiver is one of the best filler cards, Lunge is pretty nice to have, I like it. The thing is, it makes your roll animation a tiny bit longer, so if you don't like that, you can run it on a lower level, or you could just replace it with Kinetics, for example, and run Quiver on level 2. That's an option. There's also other options, I'm not gonna go over everything, but be aware of the possibilities. Now, your big game loadout. It's pretty set in stone. Territorial. Territorial is mandatory. We're playing big game, it's all based on a right click, so we need a right click the most often that we can. Tumble on level 4, level 5 is possible if you want to run Somersault on level 2. This is an option. I would say Ammo on 2 and Kinetics on 1 is pretty much what you want as far as filler cards go, because you need as much ammo as you can. Since you have your right click so often, you never want to be in a situation where you right click someone and you're just reloading and you miss the opportunity to get a kill. Now Impulse. This is the template for the loadout. You could replace Kinetics with Quiver. You could make an argument that you're pocketed by your support duo or something, so you want to run max HP and just a filler card like this. This is an option. I would say though, Cassie has to leave her support at some point. That's how you play the character to be efficient. You are a little bit more floaty. You're not an Octavia, you're not a Dredge, you're not a Betty. Right? You are not just anchored in one place and you shoot from there. So being more independent with your own self-sustain is great. Now Tumble on 2 and Drain Life together is one of the magical numbers that allows you to have the most out of the two cards and the whole math behind the healing and cauterize and your HP. If you're a bit more curious, Drain Life on a super high level or any sustain card on a high level means that early on in the game when cauterize is weak, it's broken, everybody knows that, but when you do get hit by cauterize, it's like dropping a point or two in those cards. So having an overkill in those cards makes it so that later in the game, the card is still good enough. That's why you want to invest a good amount of points in those cards. You rarely see good self-sustain cards on level 1 or 2. Having this on a higher level is better than having Tumble on a higher level, because this is more raw value. Yes, Tumble is HP that you have all the time, and this is not going to trigger all the time, as in sometimes you're full health and you're not going to get the benefits of it. But if you're full health, who the fuck cares, right? Now this is the same loadout where you have Tumble on level 4, Drain Life on level 3, you could drop Somersault 1 point and go Tumble 5 or Drain Life 4, or Blast Shower on 5. Now I probably forgot to mention it, but Blast Shower is irreplaceable in this loadout, it's core. These two cards are core with that one, then Tumble is a really really good card and just ammo is always nice in Cassie. More tanky generally means I'm playing against snipers. Bomb King, pretty straightforward, royal subject. Chain reaction sometimes. If you're playing against low mobility comps and you have time to stack your bombs, you're good enough at it, right? You have time to stack your bombs and explode them without them being able to do anything about it. Now we have the main loadout for double poppy bomb, which is royal subjects. All of these are basically core cards. It's the same thing as Shrix, which we're gonna go over later. You have five cards that are good, and the other ones are kinda trash, so there's no point in picking them. They nerfed the shit out of the reload card a while ago, and because BK is a spammy character, you need a bit more ammo. Shakuna is insane because movement speed is one of the best things this character can ask for. King's New Cloak on the high level. Why? Because you're gonna be in the face of people, you're gonna be close to mid range, so you're gonna take a lot more damage than your average Leon player or Victor player. Backdraft is nice because you have two stacks of poppy bombs and you wanna keep cycling them so you're able to go around the map as you wish. And King's Court is one of the best sustain cards because it heals you for 15 every time you detonate the sticky. So you always have that card active, basically. If you're playing Chain Reaction, same loadout. Pull back in the backdraft, go for more ammo, and you're set in stone. Shrix, Nocturnal. That's the only thing you play. Crack Shot is funny, but it's bad. Unauthorized use is not even funny, and it's not even good. Shrix has one loadout. You can make an argument for two loadouts, and you're gonna see how funny and small the difference is. Why do we run these five cards? Same thing as BK. Nothing else is really good enough. Now, Shrix has that thing on Nocturnal, which gives him 20% movement speed when he's on stealth. 
this character also buys Nimble, also is pretty tanky, and this character is played as an aggressive sniper hero, almost like a Cassie. With all of that in mind, you know what cards are good. If you click, see what's available, reload speed is whatever, inaccuracy on the pistol, pistol is trash, his ultimate is trash, so it's not that good, the flare is whatever, same thing, flare is not that good anymore, they nerfed the shit out of it. Again, swapping to the pistol, pistol is dog shit, cool mags is fine, but you don't really have a room for it. Dexterous used to be good, it's not good anymore because the pistol is so trash. Escape plan is bad for a specific reason. It triggers only every 10 seconds and you need to enter stealth below 65% health, but when you use your stealth, you would rather use it in a different way than just to heal yourself because you have a limited amount of it. Now, because you have a limited amount of stealth, one guerrilla tactics on level two. Tactical retreat synergizes well with that because we have 20% plus the 30% on there. We're pretty speedy now. You keep going in stealth, you move around, you change your angles very often. It's really annoying to play against that. Infuse crystals. You have five fucking ammo. For an aggressive sniper, if you don't run Relentless on level 4, it's a death sentence. Grizzled is OP for one simple reason. They buffed the shit out of his HP pool a while ago. So now he is one hell of a tanky motherfucker, which accentuates his gameplay of I'm aggressive, I can go in, I can play behind my tank, I can play like a sniper. Now the one variation that you could do is infuse crystals on 1 and Grizzled on 5, because the 50 additional HP makes you that much more tanky since you don't really have self-sustain cards and you have 2150 HP base. This gives you the ability to be 2400 HP, which is a lot for a sniper. The thing is, do you really want to play Strix with six fucking ammo? Most of the time, I would rather play this loadout. And if I really, really need to be so tanky for some reason, I will play this. But that's a rare situation. Sati, window of opportunity, everybody knows that. Improvise sucks nowadays and heads or tails never was good. This is your only loadout. Max HP to break a first threshold and to break a second threshold, we have to run play the leggings on 12% damage reduction every time you use your blast pack, your blast back. What happens with your blast back is that you are going up in a straight line at the same time as your opponent. So you need to be a little bit more tanky because it's kind of easy to shoot at you unless you launch them all the way up to the skybox. But if that happens, you're cucking yourself more than the enemy. Step off on level two is enough. Stop running this on level 5 or level 4. Level 3 is acceptable, level 2 is acceptable. It's enough to force resilience. You could run this on level 3, reduce your ammo, right? This character is all about shooting, so ammo is important. Grab and go is important because ammo again. You're already forcing resilience. If you're not, well, great. You're launching them far enough so that you throw them off, but not so far that, first of all, you enter the first instance of damage drop-off. And if you are in a room and you just spent four points or five points just to launch them super high but you can't while well, you could have spent those points on a better card shalin is the case of you can be a funny boy and play desert silence and blah 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 but in reality it's like sand trap there's no argument to be made if you want to play seriously this is so broken it rewards the player for missing the enemy player. You still cripple them and you still deal 300 damage for missing them. You could shoot at the ground on a buck jumping at you and you're not gonna get damaged by the jump. That's crazy. Now Shaolin has basically two loadouts and it's it all comes down to personal preference. If you're gonna run the HP card it's either on level 3 or level 4 or 5. Do something like this or you could do something like this again. This character on, in the first round buys Nimble and Veteran so what do you do? If you're playing this loadout you are pretty fast. You're not as tanky so you could buy Nimble and Veteran Level up your veteran first, and then you're nimble. If you are playing this loadout, you are more tanky at base, but you're less fast. So you probably want to buy a nimble vet and then rush your nimble on three and then start targeting your veteran. Shimmer, same thing as Cassie, level two or level three. So Tyra, you basically play hunting party only. You have one loadout where you will get your marks and other cooldowns back through Primal Might if your team is inclined to get a lot of kills fairly quickly. So you have a pretty fast composition. That's what we that's what we call it, fast comp. Are you playing with an Androxus? Are you playing with a Maeve? Are you playing with Vatu? This is the loadout you pick if you have a slower comp. You're not getting kills as fast as with a fast comp because your comp is slower, it needs to build momentum. Very often you could pick this loadout if you pick Tyra for the specific thing of making somebody's life super hard in the enemy team. In any case, it's the same thing, but instead of having Primal Might on a high level, we have Ranger on level 4. Now, these are 
all of the cards that you need. Nothing else is really replaceable. Even the two ammo is not really replaceable because it's slightly better than all of the other cards right there. Now Tony the Tiger uh, plays Tigron's Fury because Heavy Blade is pretty good and the other talents don't do shit. Now your main loadout basically looks like this. The magical numbers for self-sustaining cards and HP are already set. We have tried with friends, we have tried a bunch of different combinations and this is what comes out on top. Imbued with purpose, test of strength, these two cards are core cards. This is technically, this is a core card because nothing else is better, but if he had something that's slightly better, it could be replaceable. Flying Chakrams is one of the best fillers. If you really want to, you can have a worse version of it, which is crowd pleaser, but yeah, it, that's basically it. Again, variation like most characters, you don't really want to touch on the numbers for the healing, so we are reducing our cooldown on the right click, which is our heavy blade. We can afford to do that because we're buying Kronos on the character anyway. So with these two points away, we can have Charisma level 4. And we are now tanky. Victor, burst mode, that's it. You're not trying to get to 5% body fat. Don't play cardio. You're not doing anything. It's not passive. You have to run and do nothing. If you're running, you're doing nothing. And then the 10% of the time, if you play against... It's not even 10%, it's like 5% maybe. You play If you ever play Victor into a triple tank comp, you're probably going to want Shrapnel for the simple reason that the primary fire of base Victor is better for consistent damage over time, whereas burst mode is better if you need more range and if you want, like it says, more burst damage. It's better to shoot at squishies and it's still good enough to shoot at tanks. Now your default loadout looks like this. We have Compensator on 2. This is high enough so that your gun doesn't completely fuck you over by dancing all over your screen, but not so low that it's worthless and you don't need it on a high level because, come on, it like it's not that high of a recoil. Then we have Grenadier on 2 for a, a filler card. There's really nothing else that's better than that. And Predator and Firing Stance are mandatory cards. These are core cards. Firing Stance because you're going to be scoped in all the time and you need that movement speed to not be a sitting duck. It allows you to strafe. Predator is your self-sustained card. It's your only one that's good. And it's really fucking good actually. So good that you can have it on level 5 and run HP on level 1 and it's probably the best combo that you can do. Now if you really need more HP, again, take a point off Predator, take a point off Firing Stance, Flag Jacket on level 4, take a point off of Grenadier, and you're good. Now for the rare occasions where you have to play against triple tanks, this is where you could run. You could make an argument that Predator could be on level 4 and you could have Fire in the Hole on level 2. It's debatable. I think this is better. And Compensator on level 1 because the recoil is like nothing. It's, and again, there's nothing else really better to put there. So Imani... How, how, how can I be nice about this? Imani is ass. Like ass ass. This is a character that you shouldn't play ever. If for some reason your name is Prophet, you have a big mustache, you identify as a washing machine, and if you're in love with dark skinned characters that don't need a lot of aiming skills, well, you could play Imani, I guess. If you're gonna do so, Pyromania, this loadout. There's really nothing else to put there. If you're complaining that your right click with the fire cannon is too slow, you could remove cooling runes, put Swift Seer. Remove two points from Paradigm Momentum and put two points on there. That's really it. Now for Willow. Our good girl only plays Last Flower. Nightshade is really situational. If you have to play into double supports, it's probably going to be a bit more relevant next patch because there's going to be more double support combos. The issue with Nightshade is that the number is not magical anymore. It used to be 800 damage, now it's 650. So some double support combos allow you to play that. Most of the time, last flower. The good thing about Willow is she has one loadout. Regardless of the talent that you play, you go for Flora on level 4 or 5, Sprite on level 4 or 5, Just Believe on level 4, and some ammo. You need to be tanky because you're a blaster and because you're spammy, you need to be constantly peeking. You're also pretty fragile when it comes to hit scans, especially when you're ulting. Just Believe is the only card that is worth using for your cooldowns. All of your cooldowns are equally valuable. Yes, even your seedlings. And the only way to get all of them back at the same time is by playing Just Believe. Also, if you noticed, cards like Flitter on level 4, Twilight on level 4, and Sprouts on level 4 are dog shit. Look at the numbers. They're so low, it's not even worth mentioning. Dredge, our funny boy, Kraken boy, is playing Hurl. There is no situation because, yes, somebody argued this with me. You need to play Scuttle if you are playing against controller monkeys who play Talus or Koga. Fast-ish characters that destroy you because you're on controller. First of all, get better at hitting your harpoons. You should be fine. Second of all, if Talus or anything else gets you to half HP, you take your teleporter and you run away like a normal human being. 
Now, as far as loadouts, you have three loadouts. That's your normal hurl jump loadout. I say hurl jump because it has expensive vault. If that card cocks you in some situations, that's where you switch it for Hangman's Ire. And the combo of Dreadnought 3 and Hangman's Ire level 2 is one way of doing it. You could swap it, you could play with the points. This is if you're gonna play with a Lilith or double supports. Because double supports and Lilith benefit hugely from cards like these and buying Rejuvenate. Add in the fact that you have 200 healing every one second, basically 100% of the time, and you get 350 HP back every time you shoot somebody with your harpoon, you're basically unkillable. And again, you could make the same loadout without the expensive vault and just run 50 HP instead. Betty la bomba. Fiery disposition. Next. One loadout. A lost realm. Best card. Level 5. Always. Now a second core card from Betty with love. I'll explain this in a second. We have Queen's Entrance because without that card, your F feels like dog shit. Then we have Bouncing Betty. Bouncing Betty combined with 50 HP is better than running HP on 5 and ruining your loadout because you have to play from Betty with love on level 1 and just just like play this i see i see a lot of loadouts that look like this and i i just hate it i will explain to you why this is more optimal betty on every explosion deals hp percent damage we increase the size of the explosions because she's all about spamming damage from a safe distance she's such in a safe position that she shouldn't take a lot of damage if any damage and the few times that you are going to be dueling someone you have your f ability for that from Betty with Love accentuates the identity of ice spam damage. You play like a pussy, you're relying on the curve and the bounces of your shots. And this allows your right click that you have every 5 seconds, which you basically throw whenever you have, right? The cooldown is so short. You increase the explosion radius of that thing, which gives you more bomblets. You have a potential to hit more enemies, which means more bomblets, which means more damage, and you can just blow up a few people with that ability. Now, the combo of Bouncing Betty and Creators claim Bouncing Betty is effectively 270 HP, because it gives you 270 HP worth of healing. Now, this activates for 90 every time you use your fart. Because you're not a character that seeks to play duels, you're not a character that seeks to be in close range or, or mid range, right? You can be sort of mid range, but you're, you're not seeking confrontation. You just want to spam your damage and be in an uncontested position. If a flanker or a tank comes on your face and tries to duel you, well, the tank, first of all, you should throw your Q at them. They will take a shitload of damage and they have the option to flee or die. Kinda like Omen's ultimate. If it's a squishy trying to duel you, first of all, you should always win that with your farts because you knock them away, you mess up their aim. Because you're in a duel, you're gonna lose HP, but then you're gonna heal up that HP and you're gonna heal up for so much HP with less points invested in that card than if you had additional raw HP that serves no purpose until you get dueled. This also combines with the 50 additional HP because instead of giving you technically 270 HP, this gives you 330 HP, which breaks one of the thresholds, which makes you pretty tanky. So Betty is pretty tanky without having to run an HP card. Also note that the reason we don't run that card is because we buy Deft Hands, this card used to be good when other cards were shit, but because they changed them, this is what we run nowadays. And just look at the numbers, do math, it's it's terrible, and you're gonna buy Deft Hands anyway. And have I mentioned that you only need to shoot somebody twice with a left click if all of your farts connect, since you deal that much damage to a squishy target? Vivian, now we're going to complicated stuff. I'm not going to go too much in depth with that because this is gonna be tedious as fuck. Suspect everyone and booby trap. Most of the time you're gonna default to booby trap and sometimes you're gonna play suspect everyone. When, you'll figure it out. Uh, I'm not really a Vivian player, but I know that most situations call for a booby trap and sometimes you're gonna play suspect everyone. When do you play suspect everyone? Usually when you're free as fuck or when there are stealthy characters that you need to deal with. The three loadouts on top, booby trap. The two at the bottom are for suspect everyone. I'll let you see the loadouts. You can pause and copy them. Here's the logic. Do they have flankers? Yes, consider this loadout. Do they have a blaster? If yes, play this one. If no, play versus flankers. Now, if they don't have flankers, do they have blasters? If yes, play blaster. If no blaster, play no blaster. Pretty simple. Now, I encourage you to read the cards of the loadout, right? Because this one has unchecked ambition, which says that you should not aim downside most of the time when you're shooting with Vivian. These other loadouts, it doesn't really matter. The whole complicating thing about Vivian is she needs about 12 loadouts and we're not going to delve that deep into it because there's no pro scene or nothing. This is just for our competitive endies. So scapegoat on 4, contingency on 3, 
all of the math behind it is already done. This is contingency on two with no scapegoat because if no blasters, nobody's shooting at your feet, right? Now there is a situation where you could go suspect everyone with free default or suspect everyone or booby trap with no blaster. You have to consider, do they have to shoot your shield or not? If 100% going to shoot the shield, you probably play the slowdown. If they're not really going to shoot the shield, you should play this one. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you're playing against Sky, if you're playing against Strix, if you're playing against Sati, if you're playing against Shaolin and you need to deal with them, the reason you picked Vivian is because of the drone, then this is the loadout that you play. You have Trollless Eyes on level 2, One Step Ahead on level 3, Nowhere to Hide on level 3. The reason we don't run one step ahead on a high level is because you don't need to be super speedy with Vivian. This is enough. You're a pretty static character. Lifesteal is your form of self-sustain and unchecked ambition is just magical. It's insane. Octavia. Now we go back to simple stuff. Octavia plays only hell or high water. Sometimes you can make an argument for playing display of force if you are free as fuck. You should always play with the mindset that you're gonna be a target. And she has one loadout. 200 HP. Interdiction on 4 because you need 8 ammo. If you have 10 ammo, it's a little bit too much. If you have under 8 am additional ammo, it's a little bit clunky and you are gonna find yourself in situations where you wish you had more ammo. New Boots is a really good card. It's mandatory if you want to play Octavia without feeling like you're a fucking slug. And then as far as filler cards, nothing is a good filler on level 2. So that's why we max this one and go snap to it in overwhelming force. This is like the least bad one. This is the second least bad one. If you want, you could drop one point there and go one point on HP. This is not necessary because the 50 additional HP doesn't do a lot compared to the additional 20% movement speed on this one. And Kasumi, we're not going to talk about this character because if you have read the patch notes, she's getting a humongous rework and we're not tackling that without some time spent testing the character. So I hope you enjoyed the video and leave a like, subscribe if you like the content. I'm gonna do another one like I said with flankers. Yeah, be ready for more content.